Hi, this is Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. I was sitting here thinking about a time when I was out there making some stupid decisions. I hope this encourages you because sometimes when we feel like we've been abandoned in our hour of need and we feel like nobody really cares, nobody's thinking about us, nobody gives a hoot, um, I'm telling you, that's a lie. And I want you to hear how much of a lie it really is. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my dum diddy dum diddy -ness. I just made that word up. Yeah, you won't find that in the dictionary. And I was in my 20s. I had not given my heart to the Lord, so I was what the old folks used to call a heathen. Yeah. <clears throat> so, in every sense of the word. And I was hanging out all night. Now, I was, uh, I had left home. I just wanted to be out there doing what I was big and bad enough to do, right? But at one point, I ended up sleeping in my car. Now, I could have gone home any time. But I have a certain principle that I still live by today. If I don't want to be around you when I'm doing well, you won't see me knocking on your door when I'm in need. I personally think it's wrong. If I'm not going to hang with you when I'm cool, I'm not going to come begging when, I, when I'm not. Because that, to me, is using people. That's just my own little personal pet peeve. So... As a result, instead of going home where I was welcome to do, I chose not to. Because I didn't want, I wasn't ready to be with my parents. I still wanted to get out there and do my thing. I didn't want them in my business. I didn't want to hear it. And they had a lot to say. So since I didn't want to be bothered, and I was being hard-headed, Mm -hmm. I decided to hang on my own until I got on my feet. Then when I felt like I wanted to be with them and enjoy their company and I didn't need them anymore, then I'd knock on the door to pop a visit or to move back in, whatever. But I wouldn't be in need. I'd be an asset to the family. So here I am sleeping in my car and I'm hanging out with my buddies and the, the nightclub, you know, we're at the nightclub now, my car is parked. One issue with my car now, I'm on a flat. I'm making a point, so hang with me here. My car has a flat tire. My tire is shot and I had no money to do anything about it. So here I am, I don't have anybody to turn to for it, so I let it be. And wherever I have to go, I either hop a ride or I walk. No bus fare. So here I am hanging out with my buddies. That doesn't cost anything, I'm just hanging. And I come back after the sun comes up. They drive me back to the back of the club where my car was parked. And one of the guys was sitting out there who was getting ready to clean the bar for the next day's worth of business. And he said, hey, Pat, uh, do you know an old man driving a Ford Falcon? And I said, yeah, that's my father. He said he came by here. And I said, oh, no. You know how we are when we're young. Oh, no. What does he want? Ah, ah, ah. You know what he told me? He said, uh, I thought that was your grandfather because he's so much older than you, but he got down there on his hands and knees, girl, and took your old tire off and went and bought a new one and came back and put it on. I, let me tell you, you guys, I felt so small because it hit me right here how much my father loved me. He knew I didn't want to be bothered with him or my mother. 
and he was still looking after me. He was still taking care of me. When I couldn't call him, when I refused to, he was still there. He was still looking after me. When you refuse or you're too ashamed to go back to God, when you don't want to deal with his ways because you still want to sow your mighty oats, because you still want to get out there and explore new horizons in the dark, in the dark and sinful world, being stuck on stupid, knowing God's calling on you, knowing God's people are calling you back into the fold, knowing that your parents, your family, your loved ones are wooing you. They're praying for you. They're worrying about you. And you have a God in heaven that is looking after you, who is supernaturally protecting you while you're in the middle of your nonsense, while you got your hand up in his face with the attitude, talk to the hand, I don't want to hear it. Still loving you, still there looking after you. You have no idea how much God loves you. You have no idea how mindful God is of you. Just like I had no clue how mindful my father was of me while I was living in my selfish ways with my selfish attitudes and my self-centered disposition. And here he was taking care of his baby that couldn't give a hoot about him, but he couldn't help but love. You guys, you cannot, you cannot take too long trashing God's love. You cannot take too long ignoring his cry as he reaches out to you. You cannot ignore his people, the voice of his love begging you to come back to the fold before it's everlastingly too late. Please know that no matter what your situation is, no matter how fouled up it's gotten, no matter how messed up, chewed up, and spit out it has become, God is for you. Don't wait so long that he has to turn you over to a reprobate mind. Don't go there. Don't go beyond the point of no return. Please, seek him while he may be found. 